My name is William Ivy Long, and I'm the costume designer for Cinderella on Broadway, Rodgers and Hammerstein Cinderella. In 1975, I came to New York. I just graduated from Yale Drama School with my frighteningly titled terminal degree. And I apprenticed myself with a fashion designer, great couturier Charles James. Meanwhile, sort of dancing around doing shows for my friends who were then getting work. And my first Broadway show was uh, Inspector General at Circle and Square. And then my first musical was 1940's Radio Hour. But the first big life changer, five years after I arrived in New York, was Nine, the original Nine, the musical, Maury Eston and Tommy Toon and Anita Morris. And it changed my life. Well, you know, Cinderella, it's the very first time. It's, it's, it's Broadway debut. Rodgers and Hammerstein's last final Broadway debut. I hope they're really happy. It's very exciting doing that, working with that music, telling that story. It's very aspirational. It's very, you know, it's, it's a fairy tale. And fairy tales are all about wishing and dreaming. And who doesn't want to make that come alive? When you start working on, on, on any project, you uh, start with, you ask the director, Give me some outlines so I can bring things to you. And uh, when it's a fairy tale land, you have to figure out who, what, when, where, and, and why, and how. So we sort of made this wall back here and started putting our favorite pictures. And I surrounded us in this very room with all of these, oh, the coach. OK, here's an entire you know, four by eight of, of coach pictures. And here are soldiers. And here's armor. And here's the dr dragon. And, you start with that, and then once you look at all these references, you sort of start picking, oh, well, this works, and you combine periods, and you mix different metals and colors, and you figure out the colors of the kingdom, you figure out the approach and uh, the references. Throughout, not only were we finding the period style, like here's Bruegel for all the dancing happy peasants, and then I would, um, I would do a sketch loosely based on, on the Bruegel dancers and then but in my colors and then here's Cinderella we found this wonderful porcelain 18th century porcelain uh, figurine and I thought well I don't want her to be gray like she the way she is in so many different productions because she's in the cinders we want her of color see I started interpreting this uh, original milkmaid and it went through this and it morphs and then you keep working and you pick fabrics and you have fittings you never actually leave the forest in our world of Cinderella and so all the flora and fauna images of the forest are very omnipresent. And uh, butterflies, moths, um, uh, praying mantises, you know, bugs, all this sort of stuff are everywhere. In fact, here we have Archimaboldo uh, images. And this is how the, the tree monster, you just sort of mash up all pictures and then you come away with um, another idea. Because it's all out there, all this stuff. You know, we've got Bruegel next to Ta Taylor Swift. That's the process. And you never stop thinking. Yeah, you never, you get it from everywhere. Well, there's the old hag and with all her baskets and things she picks up from the floor because it's in the script. But then Vicky, I've worked with Vicky, and she's very sort of glamorous. She's like a butterfly. A moth. She starts out like she's in a cocoon, that's the crazy Marie, and then she breaks out of that cocoon and she is a beautiful moth. I, I, I can't really tell you anything except that the fairy godmother is very creative. And when she waves her hands, all manners of things happen. First with herself and then with Cinderella. And Cinderella, it just, she's just twirled around and uh, magically trans, transforms see the butterfly feelings about the ball and the men see the back of that sort of looks like a bird, bird wings and and then uh, and so all the tailoring and the dressmaking is all to look like like these uh, flowers and I made this um, I couldn't quite figure it out how to explain that what type of dress so I made this little doll dress with these layers of different shines that would show when it twirls when it twirls like this in the ball you can see the shiny bits when they fly up. And I wanted it to, to be more sparkly as, they, as the magic and the love affair that is a waltz happens. These are all in the show, every one of these. These are all earthy. Here are my earthy tones. These are like overskirts for the ball. You see these are all the layers of how you see through and it looks like that. And um, then these are the men's tailor, men's coats in the ball. See, there are all these light. And then that chase, 
where they all chased for Cinder after Cinderella. These are all those fabrics. I wanted them to, because I knew it was going to be by midnight, so I wanted it to look icy and white. But of course, you don't really make just white, so it's all these colors. So these are the men, and they're supporting all these are the women. I think the most exciting thing for me now is that we share our labor of love with everybody. And we enjoyed, the, from the director down and, and the book writer, Douglas Carter Bean, and, and the spirits of Rogers and Hammerstein. It's just very exciting to have this large dream come true. It just uh, resonates, and, and me, and I'm weeping, you know, in act two, and I know what's coming. So it's just very rewarding. I love sharing this story. I think the story is, is fantastic, and I think it can help us all because we all need a fairy godmother. And, uh, but it's, and she basically tells you is that the magic is within you, and you can make things happen. So what a good story to tell. That's what gives me the joy, is you can tell that story.